Hello. Hello, guys. Yeah, we're so happy to have you here. We're thankful that you tuned in today. Today is a, a really special day. And um, yeah. Yeah, um, so today is actually the launch of Isola Design District, uh, which is a, um, an online exhibition this year. Um, and uh, we're very happy to be official partners. And um, we chose, we are, yeah. <laughs> the internet okay uh, so we yeah <laughs> we uh, chose 10 projects which we are going to um it's the first time for us uh, being live and so maybe it's um, yeah we're, we're not really used to this we're not really used to this and we have some wi-fi connection but um yeah i think we just added uh, louis to this call and to this live we hope that's working yes yes it's working hello hello yes. hello hi everyone Hey, is it is it okay if we call you Luis? Uh, yeah, it's it's fine. Cool. Okay, perfect. Um, yeah, you told us that you're a bit um, nervous, but I think um, we are. As well. We are as well. It's the first live, but um, yeah, we're hoping the internet connection is gonna stay. We had some issues, but now I think it's fine. Um, so yeah, um, like I just said, uh, this is one of the projects that we chose for the Isola Design District. Um, and you're the designer that um, has done this really cool uh, project and we would just like to ask you some questions yeah but um, maybe before um, asking you some things we just would like also to talk a bit about the Zola Design District because I think um, maybe a lot of people don't know what it's about so Marlene can um, tell us a bit about it yeah, um, so Isola Design District is a an online exhibition which um, which has really cool projects from all over the world. Um, and this year we're uh, the official, we're one of the official partners. And yeah, and I'm, I'm not sure if the internet worked earlier when I said this, um, but um, yes, we are um, happy to contribute to with some projects and with some uh, ideas um, to this. Yeah. yeah, and we're so happy that so many uh, people requested us to send in their designs so that we were able to um, yeah, promote you guys and also to get um, you a shout out on our own um, page and also at um, Isola Design District. And um, yeah, I think um, the whole project is really Lighthouse, um, yeah, it's really Lighthouse project now in the design industry. It's not just that it's a digital fair, but it's also really cool that we have the opportunity to promote more sustainable design all around the world. Um, yeah, so yeah. Luis, we got a couple of questions for you. So maybe we're just going to start right away. Yeah. Um, so first of all, we would like you to introduce yourself, just um, what you're doing um, and how you um, have started with sustainable design or if you're um, studying design in general, something like that. Okay. Well, hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Fernando Barrios. I'm 24 years old and I'm Mexican. Uh, I'm currently studying my last semester of industrial design at Tecnológico de Monterrey, which is a very well-known design university in Mexico. And it's thank you. Well, thank you, first of all. And thanks to my university too, because they encourage us to develop new materials. They want us to be the best of the best. And well, it's just a... Uh, it's just a little show of what we are capable of. And I, I do not consider myself a sustainable designer, mm -hmm. but I think it's something we should all um, seek. To. Mm -hmm. We should all be um, sustainable designers. And I think it is a complex thing to, to be done. It's not like achieving yourself to be a sustainable designer. It's a complex process in which you are start developing new, new materials and the most important thing about it is having a material, using it for a purpose, not only just like an experimentation, but making a product, making a solution, a real solution. And that's what I tried to do with my, yeah. my lamps. Okay. Yeah, uh, we noticed that it's um, both like the material and um, the functional use of the material in your project. And I hope that all the viewers have seen the a uh, post we did an hour ago about your project um, and basically would you like to explain just with like two sentences what your project is about so the people 
who don't know know <laughs> okay well the solar uh, adobe lamp was made to to help or to aid the people nearly seven million mexicans that live in isolated regions throughout the republic and have no electricity services so what we wanted to make because it's a group all a project but what we tried to to make was a solution for them even though they have no electricity power they we all do have sun sunlight and that's why we came up with this oh can you show us the um the model of it it's really nice yeah okay cool a very important thing about it is the recycling that that is behind here i mean i talk about paper waste but it's also about pet waste the pet bottles so the most important thing about that lamp this lamp are these main components oh okay that gave me the capability of assembling the lamp let me show you uh, the lamp is divided into the carcass and the electric devices on all that stuff which contains the solar panel the battery and the led technology but mm -hmm. what we wanted to make what i wanted to make was that if your carcass is damaged you don't have to dispose the the whole lamp you can replace it make it from scratch and repair it within it that's why the electric device it's separate from the mm -hmm. from the carcass Okay. Yeah, really beautiful. Cool. So, yeah. Um. So yeah, one. Pr so here's the the pet uh, bottle called the top part of the pet bottle. Mm -hmm. Here, it's it's where it goes. So you can put it on here and use it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So really modular. So you're able to yeah. individual parts and not have away the whole thing which is pretty useful definitely yeah um so one question we had was um so there's not only um the part to screw the two things together and then um the material but there's also the solar um disc and all the electricity uh, electricity that's uh, inside and um you said that it's um that it should help people in rural areas in mexico to build this lamp themselves But how can they get the solar disk or the rest of the electricity? The availability mainly. Well, yeah, that's the the main problem about the lamp. But what I was trying to do when I graduate is to give some um, workshops to mm -hmm. help them, to give them the, the components for them to build their own lamp. I mean, this is useful for me, but I do not know if they wanted to put it in the ceiling or just in a table, I don't know. So the idea is to spread the knowledge of the material with mm -hmm. the rural areas. So they know how to do it and they might get something cooler, better. Mm -hmm. I mean, I made a lamp, so they can make bricks, another room for their, for their livings. And well, the idea is, I know it's difficult But the idea is to get the solar panel and the electric components to them. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think it's also really interesting, especially uh, regarding the cactus and the availability of cactus all around your country. Um, it might be also an idea for you not just to stop, stop at this um, material for the lamp, but also to be able to have uh, workshops to teach them how to produce this material and maybe to have them engage in different, different, uh, yeah, I don't know, furniture or whatever kind of design products as well. Sure, well, that's the idea. I mean, I'm not talking about the Mexican uh, context. I know there are many people that need this kind of innovation in throughout the world. And my workshops won't be only in Mexico. I, I try, well, I would try to make them worldwide. I want my material to be known, to be, uh, I know I want people to experiment with it and reach out new things that I may not be possible to do so. But it's like an open source without the web, web page, but with the knowledge of how to make it. Yeah. 
really versatile also regarding a lot of uh, different um, cactus plants are also eatable so yeah you have a lot of different um, well you... it's it's important to notice and to mention that it's not i mean you can eat the cactus and the slime you need to building this is just as a product of it when you cook the the cactus it uh, provides or well it provides this slime with water and that's like the most important factor for the formula mm -hmm. so you're eating and then you're having this uh, extra resource for developing this kind of adobe yeah i think it's also a really um yeah important discussion because we're also facing a lot um the problem will you use, use resources to feed people or will you re use resources to product things and if you can combine both and have a side product as well i think that's even more like the next step and closing potential pitfalls yeah i i want to, to mention that the cactus is like i mean there are like at least 300 cactus types but the one I used for developing this is, it's called here in Mexico, nopal. And it's, it's spelled N-O-P-A-L, nopal, nopal cactus. Okay. And it, it has almost no pests, so it's easy to grow. It is everywhere in Mexico and America, almost everywhere. And the most important thing, thing about it is, it's when it even, it doesn't matter if you're in a desert or in the top of a mountain or in a forest, you might get some cactus. <laughs> yeah, that's really, really cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. Unfortunately, we don't have them around here, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's just a matter of time. Yeah, that's true. Today, especially, yeah. it's so hot. So yeah, we might experience some cactus <laughs> growth. <laughs> yes. Yeah, hopefully not. <laughs> okay. Um, and um, also for all the questions that are coming in, we're going to try to um, like look at them later. Um, yeah. yeah. Q and A after yeah. talking to you. Um, yeah. So um, maybe regarding your project, you already told us a bit about your plans. But um, what would be the next step uh, regarding the development of the material or regarding yourself engaging with this um, topic? Well. As I mentioned before, I want to make some workshops. I want the people to know how to make this material. And even though I do not plan to do this for a living, I, it's just like my goal or the way in which I want to reach my goal of sustainable designer. And I think it's imperative for us as designers and creatives also, I'm talking about all the creatives, architects, industrial designers, product designers, to start thinking and designing for and with sustainability. So that's what I, I plan, I'm planning to do when I graduate. And despite I do not consider myself a sustain, as a sustainable designer, I think like half of my spare time, I will use it to improve the project, making some bricks. I have already experimented with it. I know mm -hmm. I have to test them in a more deep, deeper way. But it, it has proven me that it's almost, I, I mean, it's almost as resistant as the, as concrete, but it's lightweight. And yeah, I don't know. I made a lamp, but once again, I can make a brick. I can make a home. I can make even a dishwasher. I don't know. I don't know. I really don't know the capability of, of this material. And that's what I'm trying to do. Yeah, that's really inspiring. Um... Yeah, whenever we get the chance to try uh, this material, we should really do that. And I think you can you can uh, call yourself a sustainable designer because no no one is perfect, and it's just like really good to try to be sustainable. And um, if you're going in this direction, uh, it's totally fine. Um, no one is perfect, so. Also, it's a matter. Of, we 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 think it's also a matter of perspective. So um, I, I think. The, the description and um, the definition of sustainability is a really broad one and so i think um, yeah thinking uh, solution oriented and forward thinking is one of the main ingredients and uh, main components of the definition of sustainability and so so i think the product really has many reasons to be there and to yeah be established within different um, frameworks and conditions yeah um so but um 
Yeah, so also for the viewers out there, so um, we think that um, this project just fits perfectly to a couple of other ones that we chose for the Isola Design District, um, also for the, the whole um, digital um, fair. And um, we're going to upload this interview as well on the Isola Design District homepage. So it's going to be there as an interview, as an interview with you, Luis. So you're the designer and um, you're the star of this episode. Um, and so I think, yeah. um, is there anything you wanted to tell us or tell the world? Well, I would like to ask that uh, the viewers that feel free to, to write me down in direct message. If you have any question that we do not... Uh, have spoken a bit yeah. in the in the life and well i just want to encourage you to make sustainable design i want you to encourage i want to encourage you to make and start thinking about our future and the future you want and what you are willing to do to make it possible as i as i mentioned before i do not consider sustainability as the goal or as the mission the objective but it's also the way in which we need to work to reach our goal so yeah. it's everything and it's important for everyone not because i'm in mexico and you're in the other side of the ocean it's important for everyone to start thinking on sustainable solutions and the circular economy yeah definitely thank you for your inspiring yeah. words um now we're gonna try to see some of the comments um maybe we're just gonna start from the yeah. top malena what do you think yeah um it's, it's a long list but mostly it's just and if we haven't introduced ourselves to you, um, yeah, this is Malena. I think we did. We did. Okay, and I'm <laughs> Philip, so. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, yeah, there are a lot of. Yeah, it should be. Um, do, 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 do. I think. Um, okay, I think we're just going to start here. If we just forgot something, uh, please let us know. Um, what's the case made from? What's the case made from? I think um, you told us. Um, a lot about it, but maybe you can just sum it up well, once again. Case. Yeah. Well, the, the case is a mixture of moth, raw moth, uh, paper waste, and raw cactus slime or cooked cactus slime. That doesn't matter. But it's basically that and just the shaping of your hands. Yeah. <laughs> you, yeah. You, you don't need to, to bake it or to cook it. You just let it dry. And mm -hmm. that's it. That's one of the most important things to reduce the carbon footprint of the lamp and mm -hmm. all the material. Mm -hmm. really and it's really cool. easy to do if you're in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's easy and it's really fun to make it. I mean, mm -hmm. it's like playing with clay or mm -hmm. like a remembrance of the kindergarten. You start mm -hmm. making things and that's it. Yeah, yeah perfect. really inspiring. Um, so I think um, then there's like... Um, the from uh, Merari um, show us how the model works Luis so I think we have already so seen that but maybe we can have it once again a look okay. yeah. yeah once again doesn't matter okay well the most important component of it well to make it modular to make it the it possible to be modular was this uh, the top part of a pet bottle so you can screw it through the carcass and let me show you well it it does light and you can unscrew the electrical components of the lamp from the carcass. I don't know, maybe in some new explorations, I can use this and just to hang it on, on the ceiling. I don't know. But mm -hmm. the yeah. idea of having this uh, carcass is to make it uh, portable and to make it useful for those communities that have to wake up at 3 a.m. and start working on the, on the lamp to cultivate coffee or yeah. well, mainly coffee. Mm -hmm. Really, really, really beautiful. Um, I think also the, the design and the whole shape, maybe we should also you know, talk a bit about it. Um, yeah, it's I okay. Think well, the material it's quite, uh, it's quite a poetical thing because it's, it's just a remembrance of our pre-Hispanic history. And mm -hmm. it's, I don't want to say or to mention that it's uh, an Aztec aspect, but if you are interested, you can Google the Hispanic uh, moth bases, the basils, and they have this three-point uh, form. So it's just like a remembrance of how things were made in our past. And I mean, 
this formula wasn't mine at all. It was just a remembrance of them because they used moth and slime to cover the buildings. So if we are able to see the buildings, even though they were built 2000 years ago, I mean, <laughs> they did something well. And I just wanted to, mm. to take a look on it and try it. And so here are the results. Yeah, really, really beautiful. Okay. Um, Let's see if okay. We have something else. Yeah, I think there's one. Um, um, I think maybe it's just a comment. Um, this would be also, this would also be amazing in some places in Asia. I travel that I have an unreliable source of electricity. Um, yeah, yeah, definitely. A lot of places, but yeah, and sometimes um, you would probably have to mix up the materials if there isn't any cactus. You'll find another material that might work as a binder or something like that. But um... well, I think it's not that difficult. I mean, I, I, I'm speaking about cactus, but I also experimented with chia. I don't know if you know chia seeds. <laughs> the mucilagus, it's almost as good, and I might say it's better than the cactus slime. But the, the thing is that you might need a bigger um, quantity of seeds rather than just one. Mm -hmm. one cactus but it's the same i mean it's better i might say it's better to make this formula with the chia seeds okay together with paper and and moth so mm -hmm. i yeah. know in asia they are growing chia seeds and it's also considered when both uh cactus and sea and chia are considered one of the 50 future foods foods for the future yeah mm -hmm. So it's about um, yeah, localizing the availability and also just yeah, to think about different innovative mixtures and formulas to include them into your material program. Mm -hmm. I think that's also yeah. really solution oriented. Yeah. Um, so we're just going to go through a couple of more questions. Um, yeah, uh, it's Anvi Dedia. There is a need to shift to circular economy moving from user experience to sustainable user experience. Totally agree. I think, <laughs> um, yeah, I yeah. think. It was your inspiring words regarding yeah. what we all have to work on and that we have to include more sustainability into our everyday work and our thinking mindset. Yeah. Um, and long, ter long term, I think it just makes us happier if we have a cause and not just design random things that are just landing in the landfill. Mm -hmm. yeah, oh, so. yeah. I totally agree with that. <laughs> and there are like a couple, um, couple of more questions. So um, one is from Nam. Your inspiration, what is that? Oh. The sorry, can you repeat the question? Um, the question is, what is your inspiration? Oh well, it all came up with my with my professor. It's called Moisés Hernández. It's a very famous Mexican designer, mm -hmm. and he wanted us to make or to take as an inspiration the Olafur Eliasson's uh, little sound lamp, and that's where we all started. So taking into account the Little Sun, we tried to make it with Mexican materials, with our context and for specific areas throughout Mexico. And well, that was mainly the, the reason we made this amazing project. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's so cool. Yeah, the story is so, yeah, such a great story behind that yeah. project. We, we definitely love that. Yeah, I think I saw an article um, from Dizin um, about your project other projects that's when i first saw the project so uh that was really inspiring um yes so okay so okay, let's perfect. Um, jump to the next one um so how long your project has started till the model ready to set an exhibition okay yeah how long is the process of this project well we developed this project in less than two months moises was like a bit nervous if we can make it or if we could achieve the project but finally we made it and it just took two months of investigation and developing wow. and reaching this. I mean, I haven't touched it since last semester, but it's intact. And I do, I did uh, some research and I, this was just my final mixture, but I, I tried with coffee grounds, uh, some other Mexican seeds, many other materials and well, that's why we took up uh, two months to develop the project. But it was once I have mastered the the formula, it's a piece of cake. Okay. Um, so I think um, there's a long process ahead of you. 
to establish it and to develop new things. To, um, I think, um, yeah, also a couple of impressions you already gave us. Um, also establishing workshops and having maybe uh, ideas for capacity building frameworks and stuff. So I think it's a really great opportunity for you also to engage in, uh, with your future workforce. Um, so yeah. I think the uh, next one is, Marlene, you can maybe... Okay. Um, do you use a natural raisin in this product? Okay, we already know. That you don't. What you don't? Uh, what you use and what you don't use? Okay. Um, um, can you build with this material? Can you build with yeah. the material? Um, can you well, build? With the so I think yeah, it's like architecture. Architecture wise. wise, yeah, yeah. That's one of the most. Uh, well, I want to try it. I know it has the capabilities of, but it's a further investigation of uh, of its behavior is needed in order for me to tell you, yeah, it's approved for, for building, but I'm sure it should be mm. uh, available and a, a really good uh, alternative for building, mainly because many homes throughout the world are made with adobe. So it's basically the same mixture. I just added the Mexican slime, the cactus slime, and well, that's it. Mm. I'm sure it will, and I'm, I am going to take it for building, yeah. Cool, and yeah. that's maybe also the thing that you said in your introduction, that you cross borders between architecture, industrial design, and just bring, um, bring the different um, creative industries together and just yeah. to establish and work on something collaboratively. Yeah. yeah, I think we should all act as a whole, and we are not an architect or designers, we are creatives, and we are trying to develop a new world, and a better world, I mean. So yeah, it's it's important for us to, to, to think in that, to think as, as a whole, as creatives and sustainable designers. We are all sustainable designers. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so maybe there's one uh, question. Is there already a sale advertising strategy for this product? Uh, is there already, sorry, a sale advertising? No, I mean, it was a, a, scholar, pro um, a scholar project, but we are intending to to make it available for everyone. But I think it might be like counterproductive because we don't want people to start buying from all over the world and send this lamp because I mean, all the, all the background should be or would be useless. There is no, there is no way for it to be sustainable if we craft it and then we send it to China to France, I don't know, wherever yeah, they yeah. want it. So what I want to sell, well, not sell, what I want you to to have is the formula. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to, to make a, or, or upload the information for you to have this formula and, and have it for your own mm -hmm. purposes. Yeah, yeah the op open source idea. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, It's more like an open source thing and not like a, um, you want to make money or something. So yeah, that's that's very. Yeah. Um, is there something else? What, um, happens? what happens if the material gets wet, for example, in the rain? Okay, I was I was expecting that that <laughs> question, but you don't have to worry. I mean, I did not mention, but it's covered with a alcohol-based formula that uh, prevents water from reactivating the materials. Mm -hmm. Okay. I would also make it uh, visible and accessible for for the people in the open source. The alcohol it's, formula. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or yeah. maybe finding something else. Yeah, I know. That was the most. Uh, I mean, I have almost no time for investigating and developing yeah. that coating, but that's why I wanted to make it open source. I I'm thinking about Mexican materials, but maybe in Asia they have the solution for making it waterproof. So, I don't know. Although it's waterproof, it might be better. I mean, I want the formula to to be better. Yeah, definitely. And I think there are already some some yeah, some comments on how to make it waterproof without using the alcohol mixture. Um, yeah. and, yes, well, I, I'm reading one of them. Can it be glazed to make it waterproof? Yes, it could be glazed. And you have no, you do not have anything to worry about. The only thing that is going to happen, it's the, 
the brown color should be would be darkish. It would be like a dark brown, almost almost black, but it's it has no problem. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, yeah, I yeah. think um, I think that's if, it. If there are no questions anymore, um, I think yeah. Okay. Um, and also, uh, yeah, we just want to encourage everyone to uh, look at your page and <laughs> follow you and see your designs that you're doing in the future. Um, also, we're going to do um, two more interviews, one tomorrow and one the day after with other designers. So you guys can join in. And um, we would also be really happy to have maybe follow up with you one day and um, you just sure. going to tell us how successful, yeah. Or yeah. how happy you are with and the future development and also Regarding your post, I think we haven't mentioned it yet, but we posted it a bit more than one hour ago, and um, we're pretty uh, happy with the engagement, the likes. Yeah. So I think people out there they appreciate your work. So yeah, I'm really happy now to experiment this uh, with this material, and I'm really I'm really gonna do that. So it's really inspiring to talk to you about that. So thank, thank you. you. <laughs> we're really happy to get to know you, Luis. Yeah. Well, I, I, I want to thank you, uh, not only by myself or talking about myself, but I think it's important for you to make this kind of proposals and this kind of social media acting for designers and sustainable designers mainly, because our work should be spread everywhere. Not only about, no, I mean, designing is quite easy with plastics, but sustainable design is a quite more difficult task and we should all make it happen yeah yeah definitely and i think it's more uh, rewarding at the end of the day if you think about or think around the corner and then you come up with a solution that is not just really pretty and a uh, beautiful design by itself but also yeah that is thank you solving some problems yeah i i also want to encourage the sustainable designers to share your knowledge i mean it's, it's no, it has no use if you develop a new material and you have it only for your own. I think we should all can't, can access the, the knowledge and the formulas for yeah. we, to build our new future, our sustainable future. So, yeah, yeah. Please, please do so. Yeah. Yeah, not just the knowledge, but also your projects. I think it's very inspiring for everyone if we all keep sharing our uh, projects and stuff we came up with yeah it's just um very helpful for everyone so thank you very much and um yeah enjoy your beautiful day yeah <laughs> thank you see you good night bye bye, bye.